I think I entered the first rodeo I ever entered over here at Groover at a little junior rodeo. I was six or seven years old. Anyway, we just kind of grew up doing it. Uh, my sister and I went to junior rodeos and then high school rodeos, and uh, and that's another reason I went to Tarleton. They was a good rodeo school. Calf roping, team roping, bareback riding, and saddle bronc riding. And then uh, about halfway through, college I quit riding barebacks because I'd got my hand broke and I got to go to the college finals uh, four times twice on the team and twice as an individual. I qualified in the bronc riding on the years that I was individual. Won the region one time and won second in the region one time. Broke a foot one time, uh, tore my knee up, uh, broke some ribs, uh, no big major injuries but Few broken bones and first one thing or another. My kids are both active in rodeo and Audie got to go to the high school finals the last two years and his little brother's a freshman this year and he got to go this they both got to go this year and they went to the junior high finals and uh, we having a lot of fun hauling them around. For me, um, it was because of the rodeo team, and I knew they had a good program there, and I wanted to be a part of that. Uh, I, I got to Tarleton, I had come from West Texas, and I loved the trees and the campus and uh, the, the beauty of it. We had a ranch and a grocery store, gas station, so I needed to be close to home. It was like 65 miles, and I liked horses, I could take my horse, and the rodeo was a big drawing point for me also. We had to either pay somebody who had calves to practice roping or furnish our own calves. There was nothing at that time sponsored by the school. Several of the boys had lived off campus and had arenas at their house, and they were very good to us uh, to let us rope there. We paid them, and we practiced, and we practice with the boys. It was a very, it was very competitive in the practice pen. The first time I went to the National Finals, I was a nervous wreck because, you know, I felt like the pressure was on us because we were trying to win the, the team championship again. I can remember also being very nervous, but um, it's, sometimes that's when I did the best. I had to be 11-8 to be the the girl that was behind me because she tied and I was 11-6 and that gave us a national championship. So, so the pressure was on me. The pressure was on me and uh, I can remember that all the, of our team boys and all of the girls were sitting when I got through time they were on the fence The boy, and when they said that they all ran out there. I didn't realize that they were sweating it as much as I was. When I went to Tarleton, Angie and I hauled together, and I had a 1964 Chevrolet pickup, standard shift, six cylinder, no air conditioner, and she had an old two horse trailer that had been painted about five times, and the paint was chipped off, single axle. We loaded up and went to uh, Portales, New Mexico, like a happy as lost, <laughs> you know, burning up, but we were happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a car and a horse Ooh. trailer and I had a, a roping horse and a barrel horse, so I hauled by myself. Uh, times have changed yes. in the rodeo world. <laughs> One of the best parts is that we've all remained very close. Even the boys, the boys were tremendous help to us. We had this deal that whoever won, we had to buy hamburgers, cook hamburgers. And then at that next week, and we got to where we had a little camaraderie every week. Now my grandson, that he's 13, and we're very fortunate to have them living here on our place. And he ropes, and he, he does good. Yeah, now that's when Sharon and I won the all of the all around. All of the all around. Our senior year. Remember, J. C. Penney's bought us clothes. Yeah, they gave us the clothes we got. And, and Vicki's the, I have to give Vicki the credit for this. She's the one that said, Sharon, we need to do this. And that was our picture at the, at the finals, finals when yeah. we went down to receive the trophy. I thought I would go to Sam Houston. They were the rodeo team at the time. 
but my next door neighbor, Bobby Hungate, a year older than, than I, uh, went to Tarleton, had such a great time. They won the national championship in 67. So I didn't have a car. He was my ride, so that's how I ended up in Tarleton. No regrets whatsoever. Well, I'm kind of the same way. I had friends, Angie, and that uh, AGRA with me, and I had been accepted at Texas Tech and decided to go to Tarleton, and Angie and I were actually roommates, and that turned out to be great. That's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. And my brother, Terry, was already there, and the rodeo team really had just begun. Just, uh, he and his group had just begun the rodeo team that, I, that I'm aware of. So it was a good place to go. And I was looking for a small school, and uh, I, it's just, it was a wonderful experience in many, many ways. I knew that they had won the rodeo team, the national finals the year before. And uh, then my senior year in school, well, uh, I went down there. It used to be FHA, the Future Homemakers of America, which, which my son said, what, you mean FFA? And I said, no. <laughs> That's where we went for an area meeting, and I'll never, ever forget the small, narrow streets. And then when we got to Tarleton, all the cowboys. <laughs> was it was hard work, and uh, but it was fun. And everybody that was there, I think, the school, the community, the student body, the uh, team members, they were all behind you mm -hmm. and you felt so good and they gave you that confidence. <clears throat> and I can remember when Angie and I, we would go and practice um, tying calves or roping and her and Vicki were always tying goats. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to get around them too much after they got through <laughs> tying goats, but you know, but that you know, everybody was hard at work at what they did, but we loved it. We loved where we were, and um, Tarleton couldn't have been, you know, a more supportive place for all of us. And I just think that it gives you that opportunity and that confidence to to go on. Well, and think about Deadwood and it being rainy, and everybody was having to change clothes fourteen times, and that was one thing that I remember about my freshman year. When we went east, it would usually run. Well, the thing I remember about the Master Show was that in the goat time, we had a water hose running right outside the arena. It was like knee deep, just slush. Goat tires, everybody was getting hosed off outside the arena. Well, Bozeman, Montana, when we went, or the first, only time I went was the first year they'd had it at Bozeman, and it, I guess it's changed a lot since then, but I think it had two motels and uh, maybe uh, one place to eat, and all I remember is they didn't serve tomatoes and they didn't know what iced tea was. Appaloosas <laughs> <laughs> are still sort of, <clears throat> people think they're a little different, but uh, I had an excellent horse, and uh, when I pulled into Bozeman, I remember y'all were there about the same time uh, Sally was, and you know, they didn't laugh behind my back, they would laugh to my back. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know that I was going to whip their ass. <laughs> and I won two go rounds with split ones. <laughs> I was more known for my horse than anything else. Well, they talked about your horse when you left, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah, they better. <laughs> but in a good way. When I retired, I, I had a goal that, uh, that I didn't want to just see my friends at uh, funerals, that I wanted to see them at other times. So we started this thing. We call it the Old Broads Club. We do it during the stock show on a Tuesday night. We're at the age now where I think we've got know what's important in life and, mm -hmm. exactly. and, and have our priorities uh, uh, in order and so uh, meeting each other and taking care of each other and, and getting to know each other. Wow, new leader, nice job Francis. I guess I chose Tarleton because it was all I knew. My mother um, is Rosemary Tompkins. She taught in the social science department. She was a professor. I lived in the dorm the first summer semester that I went and then the fall semester and then I moved back home because um, at that time they had curfews in the dorm that didn't fit with rodeoing so I had to go back home and in the spring um, 
Vicki Higgins Emerson contacted me and said, hey, why don't you enter the college rodeos? We need somebody on the team. I uh, won the region the first year and the college title, the national college title in the barrel racing. And we also won the, the national women's team title. I had always rodeoed. My grandfather was Everett Coburn, who is a rodeo producer, was uh, back in the day. My dad rode bulls for a living. Um, he won the PRCA all around twice and six bull riding titles. So it's kind of in my blood. It's something that worked into uh, the life that Ed and I had. So to be able to do the things that we love to do and not call it a J-O-B. I can't imagine a day going by without being able to ride. I'm really thankful that I have the ability to be able to train and ride barrel horses. At this point in time, I'm so blessed to be able to share it with others now in lessons and in teachings and in selling horses to other people. It worked out good. We do have a book. They kind of call it the, the barrel racing Bible. It covers barrel racing from the beginning to the end, from raising a colt to training a horse to caring for that horse and, and the things you need to do to be a really good competitor. Uh, friends that you make, well, possibly in high school, but in college, are probably the friends that you will have for the rest of your That's life. That's exactly right. And we have found that to be true. You, you don't realize it at the time, you know, but those are going to be probably the peoples there that will be there for you when you go through hard times. Without their support this last week, I, I probably would have not been here. <laughs> Period. <laughs> they got me over a rough time last week. I would tell students to trust in God and listen to your parents and respect people and hard work. Work, work, work. I tell my kids all the time, you only get out of something what you put into it. You know, people that work hardest will be who wins most. You know, if you've got a, a dream and you want to excel in it, you just have to stay on course and not let anyone deter you. I think we all have that love for whatever it was that made us, whether it was goat tying or running barrels or roping with me. You go out and you work as hard as you can and it, it will pay off one day, it really will. And, um, and just make sure that you continue to love it and I think that's what makes you uh, want it that much more. Yeah, yeah, and you have to work at it. You have to practice or ride your horse or get up before class, go out there and feed them. And you've got to have people around you to help you, mm -hmm. you know, and take a, take a little advice. You want to have fun at it, you've got to be very serious. Love what you do. If you love what you do, then all of these will fall into place. Passion is everything, and that means to get an education. Have a passion for education because that's the basis for what you will be able to do in the future, whether it be continue in, in the area of rodeo or horse business of some kind. Go to school to get an education. Second would be approach it like an eight to five job. From eight to five every day, either be in class or be in the library study. If you do that, you'll never have to worry about anything. The other would be about rodeoing in general and practicing. When you're not practicing, remember somebody else is. That's and true. when you meet, they will beat you. Have fun, cherish the time that you get to spend um, going to the college rodeos and, and making the friends that you'll make as evidenced by uh, this group of ladies. I have, uh, great friends and great memories. It was one of the most fun times in my life.
Uh, I just wanted to say I want to thank everybody at Tarleton for uh, choosing to recognize our teammates at, at this Hall of Fame after this many years. This is especially phenomenal for us. Thank you. I'm so humbled, and I know all of my teammates are too, that you all are honoring us for this wonderful award, and we're so appreciative. And, but, you know, I really think that we're the ones that put Tarleton and Stephen Mail America on the map. <laughs>